It all started, as many things do, with Petunia. Yes, that Petunia. And this is a wonderfully easy recipe for a scrumptious apple pie that anyone can make in their own ordinary, normal kitchen. First of all, we'll have to preheat the oven. Well, that's crap. Not necessarily. There can be good reasons for preheating the oven. Name one. Frozen pizzas. If you remove a frozen pizza from the freezer and put it into a not preheated oven, the base of the pizza will go all congealed and nasty and soggy and there is nothing worse than soggy bread. It's a waste of time. You've got to turn the oven on, come back out of the kitchen, then go back into the kitchen see if the little light's gone off, which naturally it hasn't. It's good exercise. All of good. the recipes have to preheat the oven and in those circumstances it can be quite useful to preheat the oven. Oh right, all the celebrity chefs tell you to do it so it must be right. Yeah, if they all jumped off a cliff would you? Certainly not. I might push some of them. <laughs> In order to preserve the stability of my relationship, by which of course I mean prove that I am right, we decided to test whether it was necessary to preheat the oven. With science. Sort of. Never done that, except for... Except with the sherry, where you put it into a pan and pan the top and it went... And boom. Tabasco as well, so... Yes. Apart from those two episodes, I've never set fire to the kitchen. So what we're doing here is we are testing whether or not it is necessary to preheat the oven. I've got some duck breast fillets, which I'm just searing here in advance, and Johan has a tomato. I gather some people actually roast these. Thank you, Billy. So we do one preheated and one without, and see what the results are. I should mention, by the way, this is Johan, also known as Often Wrong. She's the kamikaze cookery consultant archaeologist, but she is still wrong about the whole preheating ovens thing. Not all the time. Most of the time. Only under certain circumstances. And those being the ones that have the most of the time. The only way we'd ever agree was to have a test. However, this is kamikaze cookery, so it was never going to be that simple. They're completely They're different, different sizes. sizes. Hugh, what are you doing? Um, shoot, look, shoot, shoot. look, look at these tomatoes. How is that possibly going to be a fair test? Our executive producer had got us odd tomatoes. It doesn't. It doesn't matter because uh, what we're testing. What we're testing here is what Hugh talked very fast and used a lot of words like paradigmatic and spime. In the end, we decided to go with the tomatoes we had because none of us could be asked to buy any more, and none of us knew what spime meant. One tomato, one duck breast, one cold oven. Did someone bring a stopwatch? No, I have a watch. Because we're, because we're going to time psychologically how long it is. We don't need... Which is a core point to my argument. second accuracy. We might do. So, while we're waiting for the duck to finish roasting, I've got Harold McGee here. Well, not in person, I've got his book. The principle behind oven baking is very simple. You get a box, make it hot, and you put food in it, and then the food gets hot too. Eventually, it turns out that oven baking is actually very inefficient. The air in an oven contains comparatively few molecules. It's like a deserted pub in the middle of the countryside that smells of old man wee. Whereas a pot of water has more than 1,000 times as many molecules in the same amount of space, and therefore it's more like a crowded city centre clubbing destination. If you introduce your food into the old man pub, it'll easily be able to find a seat at the bar and won't get jostled by very many of the other patrons. In the club, by contrast, it'll get an elbow in the nuts 15 times before it gets as far as the cloakroom. In culinary terms, this nut bruising represents the transfer of heat from hot molecules, or drunken other patrons, to the cold molecules of your food. In club water, the nut punching will quickly irritate or heat our food enough for it to get into a fight with the bouncers, which is what both we, and presumably they, would refer to as being done. In our pub, by contrast, there are comparatively few molecules, here represented by a local women's institute meeting. Thus, the food is only occasionally jostled until finally one too many sponge puddings to the back of the head causes it to snap and go on a rampage with a commemorative tankard. This process is what we refer to as cooking. 
Now what this means is that because it's so inefficient, oven cooking was probably the last method of cooking to be invented up until the development of the microwave. What? I said ovens were invented last! In fact it was probably one of the last methods to be invented. Ovens were invented around 5,000 years after we first started cooking. The first ovens are found in Mesopotamia, which is Iran, Iraq and various other bits George W. Bush keeps talking about invading. Later on, the Romans built terracotta and brick ovens. They got much hotter and therefore much more efficient than modern ovens. Medieval ovens were built of stone and not terracotta, so they weren't as efficient as Roman ovens. Also, unlike the Roman ovens, they built up the fire on the inside and then removed it before they started cooking. Our oven wasn't made of stone, but it did contain duck. Time to find out... Ah. It melted the meat thermometer. I can't tell if it's done or not. Because it's melted the thermometer. Another triumph of modern technology. But the duck looked cooked. Five pounds from Tesco. Don't bother. 